Hello and welcome back everybody to another episode for Quest of the Stars. Uh, today I'll be talking about uh, one of my beloved NPCs, a man named Cronus. So, as I was saying, uh, tonight I'm talking about uh, an NPC going by the name of Cronus. Uh, Cronus is a time traveler and the first friendly NPC introduced to the party. Before I tell you how he met the party, I must give you a little bit of background. He is a humanoid who hails from the plane of time. I'm sure Wizards of the Coast released an official plane of time somewhere, but this place is actually a homebrew location. It's a place dark as night, illuminated by the one thing it's made of. Sand. As in the sands of time. Get it? <laughs> uh, as for the darkness itself, uh, think of the final boss of the first Kingdom Hearts. You know how you can see everything clearly despite the background being completely dark? Yeah, same rule. Kronos is more, is more than a humanoid actually. His people are called the Tempest Custos. I'm not sure if I butchered the Latin I based the name from, but it translates to Time Guardians. And since the name is a mouthful, the Guardians and the, and the few people who know them refer to them as Custodians. They all have sort, they have all sorts of jobs, but they all have the purpose of protecting the space-time continuum, which fits the nickname surprisingly well. Kronos' backstory is that he's actually the former apprentice of the Master of Time, the leader of the Custodians. The Master was an expert smith, and is able to smith weapons, armor, and other items based on the constellations of the sky by using his skills as well as the Stardust from the Desire Constellation. And he would have passed down the title to Cronus had he not screwed up. When Cronus has time to talk to the party, he tells them that he and his master had a disagreement, and it escalated to the point where Cronus scattered his master's creations across the universe, and his master stripped him of his title as apprentice and ordered him to retrieve them, and added that he was not allowed to return home until he recovered them all. But the powers these artifacts granted the party, they were curious to see what they all did and decided to help the poor guy out. And that's why the campaign is named Quest for the Stars, but they are hunting these artifacts based on the star systems. Now we get on with uh, Cronus' involvement with the party, though in all honesty he usually fades to the background to avoid hogging the spotlight. The party meets him as another prisoner, and when the prison break started, he was taken along with the party because he knew how to teleport and teleported them to safety. He followed them to the Druid's Grove and stay there for a good portion of the campaign. He also gave the duck a mysterious belt, which granted him the ability to change his animal speak to normal people speak. Yeah, so instead of quacking all the time, he started talking like regular people. Yay. The belt turned out to be an artifact called the Belt of Orion, which gave our feathered friend the ability to add his wisdom to AC when fighting animals. The aforementioned ability to speak even in the form of an animal, and the power to summon a couple of celestial dogs, which actually came with armor based on Can Canis Major and Canis Minor, Orion's hunting dogs. The item was supposed to evolve, but uh, I haven't actually gotten around to it. When Miguel the Bard joined the party, Cronus gave him a gold coin. The item was easy to conceive since his player based him on the character with the same name from the road to El Dorado. What I didn't know was what the item would do. At least until I pictured how he would activate it. Tossing it. Flipping it. So with the DM creative juices flowing, I ruled that once a day he could activate the power of the Dorado coin by flipping it. It had two sides as all coins do. A swordfish, which was good fortune, and a goldfish, which was bad fortune. On top of that, it was supposed to grant a luck bonus to his roll. He rolled a 10 or lower, he got a goldfish. Anything higher, he got a swordfish. Actually, I gotta talk more about Miguel. Like, like remember how I said in the last video that he joined the party because of the promise of coin by finding a nerve necessary to cure the arch druid from his curse? Well, he traveled with the, duck, with the duck and the barbarian, which we covered last video, named Fru Fru. He went with them, and and in the process, they found the duck's spaceship. And that's when the duck revealed his backstory that he was actually from another world, where technology was a little bit more advanced, 
And the two of them were like, yeah, okay. So it starts raining and they rest in the spaceship until it rain passes. Which then they find the location of the, the plant and they return home. But on the way, they had to pass through a forest and through a clearing where they find a half-orc. Supposedly waiting for them. The half-orc says that he was looking for them. He pulls out his bow and arrow. No, his halberd. He actually had a halberd. And he summoned his cronies, which were f hiding from the trees. And he said that he was actually looking for the, pat for the party because he was a bounty hunter. So, initiative is rolled, and the, the fight actually went pretty well. The, far, the fight went pretty well because, at the beginning, Miguel had the bright idea to speak in a vessel. Yeah, uh, somewhere along the way, he picked up a vessel as one of his languages, and the half-orc didn't know a vessel, so the player decided to have a little fun with it. He started shouting cooking recipes in a vessel and all the half orc ranger heard was demon speak so he had his bounty hunters he ordered them to kill that one first because he was a demon or so he thought but in the end the party won they saved the day they defeat all the bounty hunters except for the half orc who runs away on his horse typical and that was actually one of miguel's finest hour so uh, so when they, they go back home, they save the Archdruid by handing over the plan. They get the monetary reward. Yay. So, it's time for downtime. So, speaking of the coin, that was actually the only time um, the power of the coin was used during downtime. And it was when the bard wanted to try his luck flirting with the tavern waitresses. And it was the same tavern that is owned by Frufu. He, uh, the bard flips the coin and misfortune happens. The coin lands on a goldfish. And when that happens, a weak cloud kill spell erupts from him in the form of a massive fart. The cloud, instead of killing those in the designated areas the regular spell does, it makes them fall unconscious due to the horrible smell. Sadly, it was the only time the coin was flipped because Miguel didn't stay too long in a party. But it was a fun time. Uh, next episode, I know it's, and it's a short video, yeah, but uh, next episode we'll go into how Cronus helped the duck re get revenge on the druid that cursed him with the baleful polymorph. But before I go, I just want to point out that I actually made a detailed entry for the Templus Custis. I tried my best following the monster manual rules, but I'm sure that some would consider the build to be overpowered. But for the longest time, I didn't even know what to make of Cronus. I thought I was just going to make him a human with a rapier or something. And it wasn't until very late in the campaign that I decided to homebrew this race. So if it's overpowered, great. It's supposed to be an isolated NPC race anyway. So, if you want to apply it to your 3.5 campaign, or even your Pathfinder or 5th edition campaign, if your conversion skills are good enough, follow the link in the description down below and read on. Apologies in advance if the letters are too small. Oh, and a massive shout out to Roll20 for allowing me to make these NPC sheets. So, yeah. Have a good night, everybody.